my name is Michael Mwase, uh, the founder of Rainbow House of Hope Uganda. Um, my daily job here is uh, first of all, since Rainbow House of Hope Uganda is uh, a project that works with young people, we have at the moment over 200 children and the youth that we are working with. But uh, you never see them at the same time. Some are playing music, uh, others are in the sports, others are playing theater. Uh, but on a daily, on everyday basis, we have around 70 every day that come here for our activities. There are quite many possibilities that we are giving to these young people. Uh, mainly these young people are coming from poor families, you know, families that don't have enough for these children and you find that they are missing a lot in their families, you know. In Kampala, they are saying the biggest population of Kampala are living in slum areas, over 70 percent of the population of Kampala. Kampala, that is uh, the capital city of Uganda. So they live in slum areas. Uh, slums are places like, I don't know how to ex exit ghetto, you know? So the living condition there is, uh, is really so bad. First of all, the systems are almost not there, you know? Sanitation is very, very poor. In fact, they even don't have toilets, yeah? If you walk around, like some of you walked around those slum areas, you saw that even going through, they don't have real places to, you just have to squeeze yourself to pass through. And there, there are even these trenches, I don't know, trenches uh, for the water trenches. Uh, so they use that as their toilets, you know, they use that as their toilets. They use such places as a, a garbage collection. And like you also saw, many children are there. So you, one wonders where these children are playing from. So the children are playing also in these kind of places. Yeah? So you can wonder the kind of diseases these children have. You know? And in fact, there are always many, many, many children who get sick especially from diarrhea, from, you know, diseases that come out of this kind of environment, you know? So you will find that most of the children are even playing in this water because they don't know. They were born there, they think it is normal, yeah? And the parents, they even, even the parents don't mind about that because that is where they are. It's their daily life, you know? So it is, it is quite... Uh, challenging also living in such a place you know and of course we also know that uh, most of our children that we work with they are also coming from such places you know so we try to change to change them to change them but of course it is not an easy thing to change someone but we still have to continue you know and uh, it is also it is also a big talk uh, to remove these slum areas. In fact, in one way, I support the idea, making sure that uh, the places are, are really organized. But the only challenge is uh, when these people are also sent away from there. And then it will also be in these slums where you find all types of behaviors. You will find people smoking, a lot of uh, weed, you know, there are different types of weed and a, a lot of alcohol. And these are the parents, you know, of these children. Also in these slum areas, you will also find 
a lot of prostitution, you know, a lot of prostitution. Even during daytime, you know, you will find people are talking really words that are not supposed to be spoken when the children are there and they are listening. They don't mind. Even the children pick this kind of words, you know, and for us, for a child to to speak those words, it's culturally, it's a, you know, it, it's so bad, you know, but the, the, we hear lots of those children speak and they talk funny, funny things about sex and they know because of the kind of environment they are living in, you know, and if you walk there in the night, it, it, it is terrible, you know, and these young children are seeing whatever is going on. So there is a lot on that, that goes on in, in the slums areas. Hello everyone, my name is Namitala Esther. I'm a Ugandan, I'm 18 years old. I love dancing, I love singing, I love drumming, I love acting, I love to speak, I'm a motivational speaker. I love poetry, I love a lot of things. I come from a family of uh, seven, although we live 16 at home. I am the sixth born. I'm the sixth born. I have four brothers and three sisters. We live in Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. Poverty is a virus. It's like the HIV virus that is in somebody's body forever without a cure. So poverty is a very big challenge in my society, more especially where rainbow is. And this is the major reason as to why rainbow is rainbow, is to help the unprivileged children. You will find a lot of street kids in Kampala. You will find a lot of uh, children who are not taken care of because of poverty. And uh, I think also the economy of my country has contributed to a lot of this, to a lot of poverty in my society. A lot of girls drop out of school and they get into marriage. They join marriage at the age of 12, at the age of 13, reason because they want to get someone who will help them attain their needs. So poverty has caused a lot of harm than good. It has caused a high cases of prostitution because people don't, people don't have jobs. So they end up joining into prostitution as a way to earn a living. People have joined uh, bad gangs. They steal, they kill people. We have a lot of murder cases in Kampala. People are left on streets, a lot of children are on streets, a lot of children have died because of poverty. So I think poverty is, is a danger to anybody's life, very bad for humanity. But here in Rainbow House of Hope, we try to create a lot of activities or possibilities for them. One thing that we do that we think is very, very important um, is education, you know? So we try to support these young people that they can go to school, to the former school, you know? Because uh, they come from big families, you know? I'm sure you might be knowing that uh, on average, every family in Uganda has um, over six children on the percentage, and you find that these families cannot afford, they don't have enough money to, to give to all these uh, children. So what happens to them is that they fall out of school, they cannot, they cannot continue with the, their education. But when they come here in Rainbow House of Hope, we support them by taking them to school. Another possibility uh, that we give to them when they, when they are here, is that we try to engage them in different activities too. They can learn music, it keeps them busy, uh, and as you know, music is also a therapy, you know, it acts as a therapy, so whenever they are in a group playing music, they don't think about their challenges at home, so we have to teach them music. But also knowing music is a language, world language that every 
everyone understands. Rainbow has taught us to live as individuals and to sustain our lives through the different skills that they give to us. And I think by the time I'm now 18, I need to give needs to myself. I need to buy nice shoes, you know, nice bags, nice makeup, nice clothes, because you know, I'm a young person. So Rainbow taught us how to dance. Currently, I work with a company called Crane Performance, and these guys dance. We dance for the government of Uganda. I think this is really a big experience, and I'm proud to say that I got this from Rainbow. The little time I get from school, I come and uh, teach the young, the young ones how to live and how to be like us. At times I'm here, at times I'm not, because of changes and growth. Rainbow House of Hope Uganda has empowered me as a young woman. It has uh, taught me how to live as a woman of substance. I have uh, been invited to a lot of big uh, uni to a lot of big organizations as um, a speaker at my young age. I've been invited to Rotary, to different Rotary clubs. I've been a leader in my school, the highest leader in school, because I got these skills from Rainbow. I've been able to teach dance to different, different organizations, like Little Miss Uganda, a pageant for young kids. Rainbow taught me to work with young kids, and I think I'm really good at this right now. I, uh, I conduct classes, dance classes, poetry classes, public speaking classes with a lot of people and I think this has built me as a person. It has encouraged me to keep moving. The different talks and encouragements that Rainbow gives to me has made me who I am right now. It has made me the woman I am right now. Since I was a young girl at, at the age of seven, I was in the grade three. So I used to love dancing, I used to love music, anything that concerned music and dance, you would find me there. So one time as I was coming from school, I had drums. You know, in Uganda we call it a possession. You cannot be talented and then you hear music and you stay seated. So when I heard the music, I had to trust where that music was coming from. Fortunately, it was leading me to Rainbow. I found these young people dancing, what I didn't know. I was like, okay, I know the drums, but what is this? So I spoke to the trainer, I was like, I want to dance. You can't imagine, in a period of two weeks, I was able to do everything perfectly. I got to know Rainbow through the drums. So as you grow up with a mother, you usually look at your parents, what they do, and they always, they're always your first sources of inspiration. I previously told you Rainbow, Rainbow is my mother, my second mother, it has nurtured me. So since childhood I've been admiring what Rainbow does, I've been admiring what they do for the young people how they empower the young people. And I'm sure when I grow up, I want to do the same thing. I want to study social sciences. I love working with people. And uh, through that, I'll be able to tell them about my culture. The government has no proper plan for them. So where can they go? So it would be better the government to have a proper plan. Or we've, we have such a place, we have built houses, and they should make these houses very, very, very cheap for the people to, to live in. There they will be solving a problem. But the government will say, no, we don't have all this money to, you know? Yeah. The new Rainbow House is a great opportunity for a lot of people in Uganda. Rainbow has been operating in Zambia, in Kampala, and a lot of people have benefited through Rainbow. I think if it's shifted to another place, it will benefit a lot of people in that place, as it did to us. So I think it's a great opportunity. It's a significancy of expanding and success to any organization to shift from a small place to a big space. This land. It's a very big piece of land and the reason why, like I was telling you yesterday, the reason why we bought this land is because at the moment where we are in Kampala, that place in these coming years, it will not be no more because of the, the development that, uh, that are coming up. So many people are being thrown away from the city centre because most of the houses like you took, uh, you, you saw, they are not at all on the plan. So they want to make a, a city, put it on the plan. We made a small party here in the bush, you know. Immediately we made a party because it was like a dream having this place. 
and uh, we even started clearing it, you know, clearing it, and immediately we even started planting food. So since we bought this land, we've been harvesting a lot of food that has also helped us to feed our children in Kampala, the rainbow children, I mean, for, for all the time, you know, we've been having mice, you know, a lot of bunen beans, and now you are going to see the, the bananas. We planted these bananas, so we've already started eating from these bananas. Yeah, these are some of our projects where we are educating our young people to take care of the animals, but also uh, when they learn how to do this, they can earn some money, you know. They can start these projects also in their homes and earn some money to support their the homes. And we sell the eggs, yeah. So the money that we sell helps us also to do some small work here, yeah. But the purpose is also to educate our young people. The issues we have to face uh, during the building of this new place, there are quite many. And uh, of course, the first one always is, uh, is money. Sorry to say that, but uh, it's a fact. Um, another issue is water, you know, because in this area we really don't have running water. Yeah? So we are now only harvesting water from the from the roof, the rain water. Um, and when we are doing the construction, when it is not rain season, that means we spend a lot of money buying water. So we have to buy water, um, which takes, which delays, of course, the money might be there, but the process of bringing the water, it's, it takes also some time because it's picked from a distance. And they have to bring, always, they have to bring it in a truck, but uh, we are hopeful that uh, we will get some people to help us to, to drill, you know, to drill water. Because this area, they said it's, there is water underground. So hopefully we can drill our own water. So there is a lot on that, that goes on in, in the slums areas. We use firewood for cooking and uh, why we are using firewood for cooking or charcoal uh, is because uh, electricity we don't have electricity of course you can see some lines of electricity you know but generally uh, I, I don't know in percentage but uh, could be that uh, maybe 70 percent or even more than that of the the population don't have access to electricity i have electricity but i'm not using it to cook because it is very expensive very very expensive you know and uh, it will be the other way around because we have to protect the environment that electricity will be made cheaper in fact, uh, I, we always hear the government talking about that, that they are trying, of course, they are really building many dams. Maybe in future, the prices for electricity will go down, you know, and then people can, stop, can have access to electricity and uh, can stop using a firewood. Then we will also be in one way saving the environment because we do a lot, because we want to eat. Yeah, and how are we going to eat without cooking food? So in one way we have to cut the trees, you know? We have to cut the trees to make sure that we eat. But again, what we are doing also in rainbow, yes, we, you cannot stop someone to cut the tree, but we are saying if you cut one, then plant 10, you know? Mm -hmm. Then there, there will be a balance, <laughs> there will be a balance. So we are promoting that 
uh, in these areas. So that's how we are, we are cooking. And the same applies to gas. Even gas is there in the market, but it's still also very expensive. So this, we hope that the government can very fast realize how it is important to use electricity that we will be saving uh, our environment. But again, we did not know about solar, you know? But luckily, solar has now come to Uganda in the, in the last years, it is increasing. But again, it's also still very expensive, you know? We have the sun almost throughout the year, even if it is rainy season. I'm telling you, there will be some hours where the sun will come and it will be, still be hot. So if you have solar, then in fact it will solve a lot of problems about what, whatever I'm explaining. In fact, solar would be the best than even electricity, maybe. You know? But solar is still very, very expensive. Yeah. But that is also one of our biggest uh, plan. In future, we want to install solar here. Of course, it's not me who, who came up with the, this saying that uh, Uganda is the pearl of Africa. It was a research, yeah? It was a research. Uh, people traveled to many countries in Africa. And of course, when they reached Uganda and traveled around Uganda, that's how they came up with this word. Sure, Uganda is the pearl of Africa, the beauty of Africa. And uh, it is gifted, Uganda is gifted by nature, you know? Uh, like you went to Jinja, you saw the Nile, you saw the Victoria Lake or the sea. Um, it's throughout the air green. Um, it has quite a number of interesting places, very interesting places. Almost every direction in Uganda you go, you will see something very, very interesting and very unique from the rest of the countries, you know. We have quite a number of animals or national parks full of different types of animals.